Hello, people of the internet from Colorado. I just finished an italki tutoring session in Japanese, so I apologize if my brain is a little bit fried right now, but uh, I'm going to try and answer some of your questions today. So let's dive right in. First of all, Devin Ashcraft asks, are you still keeping up italki lessons? Uh, well, yes, since I just came from a lesson, I am. Um, he also asks, how have those changed uh, since your first few where I was making uh, example sentences? Uh, so, basically at this point I'm mainly doing conversation practice. Um, so that's how it's changed. Um, I haven't done one of those making sentences um, type lessons for a while now. And in fact I didn't do any lessons for almost two months because I was on tour and it's just really hard to plan the scheduling uh, when I'm on the road. But I'm back into the groove and um, yeah, I'm just practicing speaking. I think that's the most important thing for me right now. And if my tutor is doing their job, then I'm going to have plenty of example sentences just from the kind of mistakes that I make when I'm trying to speak and then of course they type the correction and then I can use those sentences to make uh, new flashcards. So I learn from those mistakes. And at the same time, I'm learning stuff that's very relevant to me because it's something that I wanted to be able to say uh, in that conversation. Next, uh, Jacob Rouse or Roos asks, um, how did you train your speaking while in Japan? And do you have any Japanese friends there? Um, so I wouldn't say that I trained my speaking there, um, although I took a bunch of italki lessons before I went. But once I was there, I was just doing daily things. So most of my talking in Japanese was not that, um, nothing too fancy, just like doing daily things like ordering food and um, asking directions and basic questions. So if you can call that training, then that's what I did. Uh, but I did have a few longer exchanges um, that happened a couple times, but mostly very short daily Kind of routine tasks, but um, I think even doing that helped my Japanese grow during the week that I was there. Next, uh, Joseph Lester asks, are you planning on taking the JLPT at the end of the year? Um, honestly, I don't think so. It's never really been part of my plan. The test isn't so important for me because I'm not trying to get a job in Japan or anything like that. Uh, it's more important to me to just be able to use the language for what I want to use it for in life. So no, I don't think so. Next, this is an interesting question. So this is from Spanish from scratch. And he says that he drums a bit too, and wants to somehow connect his process of learning a percussion instrument to pronunciation. Uh, and he would love to hear my thoughts on that. Okay, this is kind of cool. Um, is, this is not a question that comes up very much, but the connection between music and language is an interesting one. And it's a one that I think about a lot because I am a musician and I'm learning languages. So I think there are definitely some parallels. Um, if you want to talk specifically about pronunciation, as he mentioned, um, that has been actually very, very prominent with Japanese in particular, meaning that the rhythm of Japanese is very, I don't want to say rhythmic because all languages have a rhythm, but the Japanese rhythm is the most sort of musical, the most sort of metronomic sort of rhythm. Um, of any language that I've learned. And what I mean by that is that if I have a phrase like Nihongo manabitai desu, it has like a very specific meter. Da -da 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 -da. And so in my head as a musician, I can sort of translate that into, you know, maybe I would hear that as a 7 8 thing. Um, for you, those of you that care, it, uh, 7 8 would be like a time signature of. And there's even like a, 
uh, like a, a melody to that too with the pitch accent. So anyway, the point being that when I hear Japanese, I hear a very obvious sense of rhythm where the rhythm is either short or long and the long ones are usually exactly twice the length of the short ones. And so for me, that translates exactly into the way that I think about rhythm on the drums. And um, that's something that has only really happened with Japanese. With other languages, I sort of just spit out the words in however long it takes to say them. And, you know, like French is not rhythmic in the same way. Um, Italian is kind of has a melody, but again, the rhythm is not the same. It's not as obvious and uh, percussive. I don't know what the right word is, but the Japanese rhythm is very metered, where I, whereas I feel like the other languages have more of a kind of free form flow without a meter. So there definitely is a connection. Um, and that's this is another subject that I could talk about for a long time. But I think the music language connection is a big one. Um, so anyway, I'll cut it off there for this time. Maybe I'll dive into another aspect at some other point. Uh, okay. Here's another one about the Japan trip from Bathrobe Warrior who said, out of curiosity, how well did you manage communicating with people? And I think I've kind of touched on this already, so I'll just say it shortly. But again, most of my exchanges were not that impressive or that long, just like ordering food or trying to figure some kind of situation out. Uh, but I did manage well as a tourist, I think. So if my only goal was to learn some Japanese and, and take a trip as a tourist and then be done with it, I think I would have done a very good job. I think that was successful. So now I'm pushing towards the, the bigger goal of actually being able to have meaningful and longer and more in-depth conversations. The next question is from Masayama, who is also asking about my Japan trip. And the question is, is Japanese food different in Japan um, and New York. And I have to say, yes, absolutely. And without a doubt, it is way better in Japan. Uh, the food is really, really, really amazing in Japan. And I can't always say the same about places in the States. It's usually pretty good, but an interesting side note, which I have come to discover, is that the majority of Japanese restaurants in the States are actually run by Chinese. And I think that's true about many Korean restaurants as well. So not to say that a Chinese run Japanese restaurant can't be good because I've definitely had some great food in those kind of establishments, but I don't know how authentic it is. And also you can't practice your Japanese there, which is unfortunate. I've made that mistake a few times of trying to speak Japanese at a Japanese restaurant and nobody knew what I was talking about. So, uh, yes, the food is different in Japan and it's way better. And here's one more from Devin Ashcraft who asks, now that it's been a few weeks since you started grammar, can you answer how it's worked out for you? Uh, let's see, you're doing some funky things with this and that. How did you get around these? Okay. So he's talking about some, verbs conjugate differently than others. So if you make a flashcard about one kind of conjugation and then you see a different kind of variation with another verb, how do you handle that? So anyway, to kind of answer all of this at once, it's been working great. It's been working exactly like it has for the other languages. So yeah, it's working just fine. Um, yeah, if you want to check out that video about how to learn grammar, I think it still holds up. Um, and to answer how do you handle those weird situations, the, the general rule is to make a flashcard um, anytime something surprises you, as I've said before in other videos. And so that's been working for me. And I'm going to answer one more today, which is from, uh, let's see if I can read that, Kyato G. And the question is, do you watch much Japanese TV or dramas or movies? And this, I'm going to answer in a little bit of a different way because 
I haven't been watching uh, Japanese movies or anything, but I have recently, in the last week, started to use the uh, NHK radio, like the online radio, to listen to articles, and that's kind of a first for this year. This is the first time that I've introduced a passive activity into the mix, and the reason being that before now, everything was really too advanced for me to be able to get anything out of it, so I wasn't doing anything passive, but I'm finding I'm starting to get to the point, you know, knowing a thousand or so words where I can start to listen to those articles and I still won't understand most of the point of the article, but I'm starting to hear, I'm starting to pick out enough words that I'm maybe noticing, I don't know, 50% of the words that go by. I'm at least hearing things that I recognize. So even though I can't put the whole story together yet, um, it's helping me to listen for that and now be able to comprehend some of the stuff that's happening. So that's that's a really cool step that I kind of passed recently. So um, I still have a lot more words to learn, but I think that I'll be able to start watching like dramas and movie or anime or whatever relatively soon. So I will probably start doing that uh, after another couple few hundred words or something. I think I'll, I'll start to be more solid. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, I've got some really cool videos in the works that will be coming up soon um, as soon as I can get those worked on and finished up and put out. But uh, in the meantime, Thanks for watching, and good luck with your Japanese. Okay, ciao, bye, see ya.